సార్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్ ఒకసారి షేర్ ఇట్ ఏం చూసుకుంటారా నో ప్రాబ్లమ్ ఆ సార్ ఐఎమ్ షేరింగ్ ఐఐటి
మన పిల్లలకా ఓకే అమ్మా ఆ సెమినార్ హాల్లో అందరు కొంచెం ముందుకొచ్చి కూర్చోండి ఒక సైడే కూర్చోండి అందరు ఒక సైడ్కి రండి ముందు సీట్ లో కూర్చోండి ఒక్కొక్క సీట్ గ్యాప్ ఇచ్చి కూర్చోండి అయితే మిగతా వాళ్ళకి మ్యూటింగ్ అమ్మాయి లేరా అమ్మా ఎత్తుండే వాళ్ళు ఎనికిలకి వెళ్ళి ముందు తగ్గుండే పొట్టుకున్న వాళ్ళని కూర్చోమనండి కనిపించిన కనిపిస్తారు మరి ఎట్లా వాళ్ళు
Good morning to one and all. It gives me great pleasure to extend to you all a very warm welcome on behalf of International Symposium on Mathematical Sciences and their applications, which is organized by the Department of Applied Mathematics, Yogyamina University, Kadapa, on the eve of the superannuation of Professor T. Vasantigaru, head of the Department of Applied Mathematics, and served the university in various capacities by the Minister, Principal, Dean, Dean Development, Faculty Dean of Sciences, POS Chairperson, and Subject Expert for our university and also for other universities. And she is the Andhra Pradesh State Best Teacher Awardee in the year 2010. Galileo Galileo, father of modern science, claimed the book of nature is written in the language of mathematics. So that is the importance of mathematics in our day-to-day -to -day, day -day life. So mathematicians worldwide are contributing to the understanding of the COVID-19 pandemic, working with the specialists such as microbiologists and virologists on mathematical models and the model parameters which characterize the disease dynamics are estimated from epidemiological data using machine learning techniques, which is a part of mathematical science. So mathematical sciences play a major role in this pandemic time. Some people say that I'm not going to study this math subject ever. Remember, this subject will not going to leave you ever. That is mathematics. Now we'll move for why we invocation song.
Now I invite the convener of this international symposium, Dr. G. Katyayani Ma'am, Associate Professor, Department of Applied Mathematics, Yogram University, to convey theme and objectives of this symposium. Thank you, Sinta Ma'am. Good morning to one and all. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Madam, respected uh, Principal Chidramati uh, Shankar, Madam, our Department Head, Dean of School of Sciences, Professor C. Vatsanthi Ma'am, my dear family members. Dignitaries, today's special invitees, Professor Rashekar Garu, Professor Mahesha Rao Garu, and my dear participants. Once again, warm welcome to all for this two days international symposium on mathematical sciences and their applications 2022 blending mode. Mathematics is fun. Math is world best game. Math is beautiful, but sometimes math is hard to understand, hard to learn, Harder to teach others. Yet, we mathematicians share our part, uh, passionate to teach mathematical sciences and their applications. The main motto of this platform is to bring together learned mathematicians, research scholars, and young postgraduate students. This will help us to exchange knowledge and ideas from the present ongoing research fundings. During this pandemic year, Luckily, I accepted our re request by phone call, Professor Maheshwar Rao Garu Velluri from Fiji University, Fiji, Professor Rashekar Garu Kharakpur, Professor Krishna uh, N. Kishan Garu, Hyderabad, Professor Srinath Garu Tirupati. Thank you, sir. Uh, we got an opportunity to share the ideas of four eminent academicians with good research contributing with meets present global and societal needs. Today's first speaker is Dr. Maheshwar Rao Velluri, Fiji National University, Fiji. He is sharing his ideas based on cryptography. And the second speaker is Dr. G. Rashikar, Professor, Department of Mathematics, IIT, Karakpur. He is sharing his has ideas on biomedical fluid dynamics. No doubt, at the end of all the sessions, we have, we all have gained immense knowledge from the speech, uh, speeches of these distinguished speakers. I'm happy to share that we have received 800 online registration different parts. I sincerely thank our Yogi Vemana University authorities for their constant support and encouragement. With this support, we are, hap we are happy to say that we are conducted free international workshops, symposiums, conferences during these two years. Thank you all the at that is, once again, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. Women are the architects of the society. She's an exemplary and one of the great architect and first woman vice chancellor of Yogi Vemna University. Now it is my sincere duty to begin the symposium with opening remarks by our honorable vice chancellor, madam, Professor M. Surya Kalavati Garu, so, Early, good morning. Yes. Earlier, Professor, Director, SCDE, JNTUH, Hyderabad, and today's Chief Guest of this function. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. So, good morning. Uh, so, Register of the University, uh, Vijay Raghupati, he joined me. And uh, Patron uh, Principal, uh, Chandramati Shankar Garu, and Convener of uh, this Symposium, Katyayini, and uh, today's uh, Madam Vasanti. Uh, so, so she is tomorrow, maybe 31st, she is superannuating and that uh, first they are conducting this symposium and Madhavi, Sridhar Babugaru, Srinivas Reddy and Sunita. Uh, so, good morning and participants, uh, good morning once again. First, I want to congratulate uh, the Department of uh, Applied Mathematics for conducting this uh, symposium. And uh, this is pinching for me because uh, Madam is uh, 131st super annotating. Uh, so, so nice of you, Madam, actually, after in, in these two years. So, always smiling and always encouraging. That is the thing what I have observed in Madam. Uh, so, this symposium then uh, mathematical sciences and their applications. Actually, I am uh, with background of uh, engineering. I know the importance of mathematics because uh, wherever we will go, so, because if you want to, um, nowadays, uh, artificial intelligence and computer science, all these things uh, behind that one, uh, every, uh, maybe uh, coding, whatnot, in every field, uh, we are using mathematics. 
So Sakuntala Devi quoted the mathematics as without mathematics, there is nothing you can do. Everything around you is mathematics. Everything around you is numbers. So maths is uh, incredible important uh, in our lives and uh, without uh, realizing it, uh, we use mathematical concepts as well as the skills we learn from doing math problems every day. Math helps us uh, understand the world and we use the world to understand math. It helps us uh, think analytically and have better reasoning abilities. Some applications in mathematics in various fields uh, nowadays is artificial intelligence and cloud computing, epidemic analysis and satellite navigation, MRI and uh, tomography, computers and so on. So, uh, so here uh, without mathematics, uh, in a uh, day to day life, uh, if you observe, everything uh, is uh, related to mathematics only. So, life is also full of maths. If you know mathematics, we can uh, analyze and we can do what nots in, in our day to day life also. So, thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much for your address on this occasion. And uh, already we have. Uh, and maths is everywhere around us. Shakuntala Devi Madam is also uh, quoted like this. Next, we look forward for the gracious presence of our young and dynamic registrar, while you, Professor D. Vijay Raghav Prasad Garu, a special invitee, but due to some technical, some official meeting, could not attend. Uh, thank you, sir, for your support and encouragement for conducting this uh, uh, symposium. With great respect and honor, I welcome Professor P. Chandramati Shankar Garu, Principal in Charge of YVU College, a special invitee for today's International Symposium. I welcome you, ma'am. I request to share her valuable experiences with the audience. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sunita. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor M. Surya Kalavati, Madam, Registrar Professor Vijay Raghav Prasad, Sir, uh, the conveners and all members of this webinar, the special invited speakers for this two days international webinar, deans, colleagues, uh, deans, colleagues, scholars, students, print and electronic media, a very good morning. Max helps in understanding, logical reasoning and attention to details. It enhances our ability to think and increase our mental endurance. Mathematical concepts gives the real solution of how hypothetical or virtual problems. In this today's international webinar, eminent speakers will enlighten us about mathematical sciences and their application. I congratulate the Department of Applied Mathematics for co conducting this international webinar in honor of the superannuation of their senior colleague and head of department, Professor T. Vasanti Madam. Behind all these activities is the constant encouragement and support of our authorities. That is our Honorable Vice Chancellor and Registrar. I congratulate the Department of uh, Applied Mathematics uh, for conducting this wonderful webinar. And I thank the committee and uh, members of this webinar for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to invite Professor T. Vasanti Garu, Dean Academic Sciences, Head Department of Applied Mathematics, who is felicity of this symposia and for her kind concert in organizing this workshop. Now, Madam, I request you to say a few words on this occasion. Good morning, all of you. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Surekalati, Madam, Respected Registrar, Professor Vijay Rao, and Principal in charge and guest of honor, Professor Chandramati Shankar, convener of the International Symposium, Dr. G. Kachayani, staff, this is scholars, students, and participants. At the outset, I congratulate Dr. G. Kachayani, convener of the International Symposia on Mathematical Sciences and their applications, and other organizing committee members, Dr. Madhavi, Dr. Sridhar Babu, Dr. Srinivasal Reddy, and Dr. Sunita for organizing the International Symposium on Mathematical Sciences and their applications. India is the birthplace of modern mathematics, agriculture to astronomy, and taxation to the distribution of wealth. Every branch of science, technology, even management and finance are deeply dependent on mathematical excellence. To mention some of the applications of mathematics are epidemic analysis. When a new epidemic or pandemic starts, one can fear that it will not stop since there are always new cases. This is not what mathematics says. 
the important quantities the reproductive ratio or not, which corresponds to the mean number of individuals infected by each infectious person. If R0 is less than 1, then the epidemic dies, while it spreads if R0 is greater than 1. The knowledge of R0 guides the strategy to control the epidemic. In particular, in case of limited resources, for instance, not enough vaccines for everyone, the goal is to use these resources to decrease R0 below 1. Public cryptography. Whenever you send an email or use your credit card online, secret information has to be exchanged between your computer and a web server. Mathematics can be used to encipher and decipher this information so that third parties can't read and misuse it. Financing and banking. In financial mathematics, traders can buy or sell stocks in a company, commodities like oil and gold, or derivatives which are virtual. Virtual goods whose prices are derived from the change of other things. Financial analysts have many different mathematical tools to help them make better decisions, for example, stat statistical models to analyze historic economic data or probability and stochastic calculus to predict the behavior of financial markets. Particularly famous is the black schools equation, a partial differential equation used to find the correct value of derivatives. Every day, there are around 50,000 commercial air, airline flights. All planes, all luggage, every crew and all passengers have to be at the right place at the right time and planes need to be serviced and refueled. Most importantly, planes can't crash when arriving at any of the busy airports. This is an incredibly complex logistic challenge impossible without mathematics and operations research. In addition, Airlines want to save money by creating a, a more efficient network in which planes take the best possible routes and in which planes are never idle, empty, or out of service. This can be done using algorithms from graph theory. Similar challenges arise when scheduling trains, buses, mail delivery, or emergency services. There are other uh, disciplines also which use mathematics. Now, I'm sure that the deliberations will be useful to the participants. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much for your elaborate applications of uh, mathematical sciences in our day-to-day -day life, madam. Mm -hmm. So we are all go through all this, but we don't know. Some people, they don't know about maths is behind all these things. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, now, I'd like to invite today's speaker, Dr. Maheshwara Walluri, Associate Professor, School of Mathematical and Computer Science, Fizi, National University, Fizi. Sir, good morning, sir. Maheshwara, sir. I'm going to introduce you, sir. Yes, madam. He's the first speaker, madam. Introduce us. Fizi, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sir, Maheshwara, sir. Is it audible, sir? Unmute you. Sir, please unmute yourself, sir. It's audible. It's audible. Ah, yes. Thank you. Now, I would like to invite the today's second speaker, uh, Professor G.P. Rajshekar, sir, Department of Mathematics, Dean, Faculty of Sciences, IIT Karakpur, India. Good morning, sir. Welcome you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Namaste. Good morning. So, ma, our uh, Vice Chancellor, Madam, Professor M. Manning Dashri. Namaste. And our uh, Principal, Madam, Professor uh, P. Chadramati Shankar. Namaste. Namaste. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, I'd like to introduce the brief profile of Dr. Maheshwara Valluri. Dr. Maheshwara Valluri is currently an associate professor at School of Mathematical and Computing Sciences, Fiji National University, Fiji. He obtained his PhD from Sri, SK, Sri, Sri Krishna Devaraya University, Andhra Pradesh, India. Prior to this, he worked as an academician in India and Oman. He was a visiting researcher at University of Auckland. His areas of interest include algorithmic number theory, computational algebraic geometry, cryptology, and quantum algorithms. 
He is a member of the International Association of Cryptographic Research, American Mathematical Society, and the Institute of Mathematics and its Applications. He served as head of the School Mathematical and Computing Sciences and Associate Dean at College of Engineering, Science and Technology and also elected representative of the University Executive Council. He also served several times as chairman of academic and examination boards. He also served as Senate member of the University. He has served as technical committee member of the several international conferences and also a reviewer of international journals. He also jointly received a Best Paper Award in 2016 for his Quaternion Encryption work from World Congress on Industrial Control System Security, 2016, London, UK. He has a total of 24 publications in national and international journals. Sari is going to deliver a topic uh, on isogeny based post quantum cryptography. So recently, they, two days back, we have uh, seen that uh, this uh, cyber criminals, they have hacked the servers of AP Mahesh uh, Cooperative Urban Bank and transferred nearly 12.9 crores to different accounts where this cryptography that is public key algorithms are uh, very much useful. Now, sir is going to deliver on this. Now, I request, sir, to start your uh, speech, sir. Oh, just to, can you allow sharing, sharing share. my thing? Uh, uh, I have been struggling to share. My system is not allowing to share my screen. Can I... Sir, now it's okay, sir. You share it, sir. Full access. No, I. You can leave them. Sir, if you don't mind sending your PPT to me, sir, I'll share it. I am. If it's possible. The master, sir. Actually. Sir? Sir, is there any problem, sir? Sir, Mashira, sir? 
అయ్యో కొన్ని చెప్తేనే మనం చేస్తాం మీకు ఏదో పెట్టాడు మేడం ఐ థింక్ వీ కెన్ మేక్ హిమ్ ప్రెసెంట్ దర్ ఈస్ ఆప్షన్ షెల్ ఐ ట్రై యా యా ఎస్ సార్ Okay, I'm trying. Uh, change. Do you want to change the presenter to Maheshwara? Yes. I have changed. Uh, let him try. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have made it to a presenter, sir. Can you try, uh, Dr. Maheshwara? Chudu, Maheshwara, you can go to the next one. Oh? Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. We yes. can hear you. I made you a presenter. Can you try, please? sir just just we need sir just we need like like, like try madam uh, we made him presenter dr maishara nindu chudu presenter ani ah i need to ఇంకోటి ఏదో పెడతా ఉన్నాడు కదా అదన్నా చెప్పండి uh huh. if possible ask ask the second speaker to deliver yeah 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 yes sir yes sir thank you sir thank you sir we can save time meanwhile we can work out yes sir yes sir yes sir sorry sir 200 aitane sir sir thank you unnadu sir nadi phone chestha sir now we'll move nishu madam ah there sir me me cheppe sir 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 the problem is Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm very grateful to invite today's another speaker, Prof. G.P. Rajshekar, sir, Department of Mathematics, Dean Faculty of Sciences, Indian Institute of Karatpur, India. Now, I request Dr. L. Madhavi to introduce the brief profile of Prof. G.P. Rajshekar, sir. Uh, one request, madam. Uh, it's all on the website, so we can uh, just minimize... or okay. maybe i can introduce myself so <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's my present introduce you sir <laughs> okay madam please brief brief so that we can go ahead yes a uh, good morning to all thank uh, you i take it pleasure to introduce our speaker dr gp rashekar professor in department of mathematics dean faculty of sciences iit kharagpur sir is specialized in Uh, uh pde theory and applications fluid mechanics boundary integral methods sir uh, has pa- has pursued his education from uh, hyderabad he did his phd from uh, hyderabad mostly we want to share the awards received by sir he is fellow national academy of sciences nasi alhabad he received jbs gold medal indian academy of mathematical modeling and simulation in the prof- in the name of professor jb shukla iit karakpur india he is been awarded with mathematician of the year konnala trust institute at national institute of technology varangal telangana state india he is also a recipient of fellow andhra pradesh academy of sciences andhra pradesh academy of sciences amaravathi and he received a citation for batnagar memorial award lecture from indian mathematical society ims 82nd annual conference of ims the most prestigious thing what we want to share with all all of you is he is an uh, a 
Uh, he is a Alexander von Humboldt Fellowship for Experienced Researchers by Alexander von Humboldt Foundation, Germany. He is also a fellow of Royal Society, INSA, visiting scientist. So, uh, sir, we are very happy you are, among, uh, you are here with us to share your ideas. Thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Thank uh, you, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for your kind introduction, madam. Uh, these days, everything is available on the web, so interested <laughs> colleagues can see. So, uh, first of all, let me thank uh, uh, Professor Kathyaini uh, for uh, kindly inviting and also the complete organizing team. I hope I'm audible, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Madam? Okay. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. may I know how long I can speak? Uh, because I think we have to cut short, right? Yes, sir. 55 minutes. 50, 55 um, minutes, sir. Okay, I'll uh, I'll try my best. 20, 20, so that means uh, uh, now it is eleven fifteen. Let us say uh, 15, sir. Uh, twelve, 12 10, like five. twelve five. Okay. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. yes, sir. Yeah, sure. I'll try my best. Okay, so uh, I I'm just having two parts. The first part is basically for uh, maybe younger colleagues, in particular, uh, masters, PhD students, and the second part is some some work which we have done so mm -hmm. let me quickly go uh, go to the uh, talk so this is uh, my credit uh, this is uh, my phd students all are past phd students part 1 uh, it is just collating and part 2 uh, is uh, our research work yeah so given a uh, um, differential equation uh, analytical experts, they quickly go and whereas numeric, they try to discretize, but mathematicians really want to analyze, wait and watch and then see carefully what kind of equation it is, etc, etc. Okay. Uh, okay, I have got some request to annotate the shared content. Uh, do you want me to? Hello? What is the protocol, madam? Yeah, Somebody no problem. Is asking, yeah, whatever you wish, you please carry and say no problem. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, thanks. That's great. Yeah. So now, uh, so let me just uh, quickly uh, go to the talk. Okay. It's not moving now. After annotation, I am not able to move the slide. This is an unfortunate. Hello. Okay, full screen. Yeah, that is fine. So no annotation required. So now, uh, typically, we ask these questions, whether the solution exists globally of finite time or unique or not. Okay, so another interesting thing is so whether really subject to boundary and initial conditions, whether the solution depends continuously on the prescribed data, that is the stability. So I'll skip uh, the theory part right now because uh, due to lack of time. Uh, so now let me show you quickly. So for example, this ODE with this uh, in initial condition, we have a solution for all time. That is a global solution. Uh, this ODE with this initial data, we have solution, but it is within a finite time. And this, you have uniqueness. Uh, for these two, but here non uniqueness of the solution because we have two solutions. Okay. So now, uh, in most of uh, the uh, early physics lectures, we would have uh, come across uh, such electric fields where the flux without any source or sink divergence of E, e bar vector is zero. And if such a vector field is potential, then we introduce a velocity potential. And these two together, we get a Laplacian. Okay. So, in two dimensions, so this is a Laplacian. Uh, so, any solution which is uh, twice uh, differentiable and satisfies this, uh, that is the classical solution. So, typical first course of PDE, uh, you look for separation of variable solution because the equation is linear. So, you can uh, pull out uh, x of x, y of y and try to substitute in this, look for non-trivial solutions, then we get two independent eigenvalue problems. 
one for x, one for y. So we, we try to solve these two independent eigenvalue problems, right? So for example, in order to find the eigenvalues, we require uh, corresponding boundary conditions and domain. So let us consider this square with these boundary data. One important note here is the data is homogeneous. You can see the data is homogeneous. So that will enable us to determine the eigenvalues. I will not explain all the conditions. For example, V of 0, Y is X of 0, Y of Y. So we are looking for non-trivial solutions. Therefore, we won't make Y of Y 0. Rather, we make X of 0 is 0. Similarly, for this. So now we got two independent conditions. Therefore, we can solve this eigenvalue problem. And so is the case with y. So once we solve these independent equations, we get eigenvalue problem. So then once the corresponding eigenvalues, we look for zero trivial solution, then inconsistent, negative, we get the solution. So now use the corresponding uh, boundary conditions and determine the eigenvalue. Here in this case, lambda is n pi and the corresponding eigenfunctions are sine n pi x. So this is a typical first course of uh, PDE. Now the question, can we always obtain these eigenvalues, right? Answer is no. Uh, I have made a change in this data compared to the previous data. What is the change? Instead of homogeneous data, one condition is non-homogeneous, which you can see here. So now if you try to use this non-homogeneous condition, you can see uh, we won't be able to determine the corresponding uh, eigenvalues, okay? So because there are infinite uh, solutions here, with the x of x, y of 1 product is 10, so you have infinite solutions, which is a choice. So therefore, there is an issue. So now how to deal with the non-homogeneous boundary conditions? So look here, I have considered a parabolic PDE, which is a typical one dimensional heat conduction problem, unsteady. So, with this uh, boundary data, which is non homogeneous, uh, this is the initial data. So, we try to find out the solution. But uh, as I mentioned, the separation of variables won't support due to the uh, non homogeneous data. So, how do we get the solution? We seek solution of this form where we are typically using only uh, space, uh, the spatial uh, function and then this is the explicit time dependent function and substitute in our equation. So then uh, this we can solve with the non-homogeneous data. So then once we get this solution, then we solve with the homogeneous boundary conditions, the corresponding uh, time dependent uh, problem. And uh, as a result, we get the complete solution, okay? So these are uh, typical simple separation of variable solution, right, which I have shown. So you can try now for homogeneous data, separation of variable solution for this, okay? But uh, I think uh, uh, most of the uh, uh, master students who have done first course of PDE, they are aware of this, okay? So positive, uh, negative, okay, and then zero, we have the solution. So for non-trivial, again, this is a negative and the corresponding eigenvalues we, we compute, okay. So we get the solution, right. So now, still we are left with one constant. How do we determine uh, using initial data? Suppose if I choose, uh, this is a initial data, then we determine the coefficient and we have the complete solution. Now you can, you can see the graph of it if you, if you plot by considering various modes. So that is n equals to 0, n equal to 1. So you take the summation gradually and try to plot. So then you will notice something called Gibbs phenomenon. Okay. So those who are interested, they can try. Simple MATLAB code you can try. Okay. So now, uh, what is the application uh, for separable solution in fluid mechanics? Uh, if a vector field is gradient of a scalar, we call it is a potential flow. 
so then divergence of u0 so that will give a laplacian now in spherical coordinates r theta phi spherical coordinates this is the laplacian okay this is the laplacian so you can try separation of variables function of r function of theta function of phi and if you substitute again we get independent ordinary differential equations for r for theta and for phi okay so what is the aim the aim is to again solve these eigenvalue problems determine n and m so this is a separation of variable solution so we can uh, get the general solution you can see so the radial function is of this form and theta is in terms of the associated Legendre polynomials and phi is in terms of the periodic functions in terms of the azimuthal angle as a result we get this solution so that we get this solution uh, in terms of something called spherical harmonics okay so this is called uh, the spherical harmonic sn theta phi is called spherical harmonic so this is in spherical r theta phi polar coordinates so this is a solution of potential flow in fluid mechanics okay so now uh, having discussed such a simple analytical technique so what is the typical flow chart of solving pdes by integral transform method so you have a pde you apply integral transform to suppress one of the variables then we arrive at the ODE. So then solve this ODE with respect to boundary conditions. Of course, you will get the solution in the transformed space. So then invert, okay, and then you get the final solution in the original space. So of course, if you have boundary conditions, the same is the story, okay. So now uh, let me uh, just quickly uh, give you Typical integral transform has this structure where this is the kernel. Okay. So now uh, if you if you consider Laplace transform, this is the kernel, Fourier transform, this is the kernel, and Fourier sine, Fourier cosine, so Melin transform. So this is how the, the kernel and the corresponding limits, right? Of course, for each of the transform to exist there are relevant necessary and sufficient conditions on f so we one has to pay attention and then proceed accordingly so now for example i give a, a semi infinite long string having one end initially at rest and other end undergoes periodic displacement that means you pull it like this okay other end is fixed and then you're so then you will see a wave so that is a typical modeling problem so if you do it you get a uh, wave uh, equation where the unknown is the displacement at any point okay so now if you uh, really model it based on the physics you get this wave equation which is uh, hyperbolic and the boundary conditions uh, one end is fixed so therefore you have and other end we assume that far off uh, the disturbance is uh, dying and you have initial conditions on the displacement and the velocity the initial displacement and initial velocity so now for this one can try integral transform solution suppose for example if i take laplace transform with respect to time so then you get the transformed space yes where your pde reduces to ode as a result we can get the general solution in terms of the transformed variable okay so now uh, we have two conditions which are displacement is bounded at in far field and therefore that restricts the solution to this which is you can see exponentially decaying solution okay so now you have a little bit of a, a complicated form in the transformed uh, space but this is amenable to analytical inversion under Laplace transform. So you can easily uh, invert, so you get the solution, but not many are aware of uh, numerical in inversion because not always you have such a nice structure so that you can invert. 
uh, analytically. So uh, there is something which I would like to introduce. Uh, I'm sure not many of you are aware of this. So this is called uh, Durbin's inversion. So if somebody is looking for uh, applying integral transforms for complicated functions, where you have the inversion, but the function is very complicated, so then analytical inversion is not possible. So then one can use this Durbin's inversion algorithm with a specific tolerance. So I have tested this on, uh, see for example, numerical inversion of this function, analytical and numerical. So it's, the agreement is quite, uh, quite good, okay? So Durbin's algorithm uh, is quite popular in this respect, okay? So we started with separation of variables, we moved to integral transforms. So now we go to a slightly, uh, slightly uh, complicated in the sense, let us say you have a equation which involves some parameter, okay? So now this parameter may play a vital role, okay? For example, consider this a differential equation. So there is no parameter here. You have subject to this, you can get the solution. Now I have perturbed this with this parameter epsilon by square, okay? So please uh, let me repeat. You have this uh, ODE. I have perturbed this ODE with epsilon by square. That means a nonlinear term is added, but epsilon is multiplied. Now, you look for solution in terms of an expansion in terms of epsilon. That means I am looking for solution why this is concept, uh, independent of epsilon, then uh, coefficient of epsilon, coefficient of epsilon square, so on and so forth. So our understanding here is epsilon is small parameter. Now, look for the corresponding equation at each order. How do you get this? You substitute this expansion in this, okay? Collect the coefficients of constant term, coefficient of epsilon, coefficient of epsilon square, so on and so forth, okay? So if I do that, you see constant, we get this. How do we get this constant term? You see y0 here and a y0 will come from here. From here, y0 cannot come because there is a coefficient of epsilon, right? I hope you're getting. Then what will be coefficient of epsilon dy1 by dt from here and a y1 here and epsilon y0 square. You see? So this is coefficient of constant coefficient of epsilon, coefficient of epsilon square, so on and so forth. Now, you may say this is nonlinear. No, because y2 is unknown, y0, y1 are known by the time you come here. Why? At this stage, y0 is known. Use that y0 here and solve y1. Use y0, y1 and solve for y2. So we can solve. So therefore, we get the solution. Now, what is our... Uh, solution of the original equation y0 plus epsilon y1 plus epsilon y2. Okay, so having obtained this, let us arrange them. So, let us say somebody says, I do not have patience, I will stop here. Anyway, you are saying epsilon is small parameter, I will stop here. Okay, you stop. So, then we would like to observe, suppose if I take epsilon goes to zero, this term vanishes, this term vanishes, you get, this is the solution, okay? Now, in the equation, if I take epsilon goes to zero, this is the equation, okay? Now, what is the solution of this? I have already shown. Solution of this is nothing but this. Now, after getting solution of the small parameter and if you get the small parameter going to zero you are retaining that solution e power minus t that means 
operator you consider this as operator okay you consider this as operator in the operator you take epsilon goes to zero okay so then you are you are going to this consider the solution of this consider the solution of this there you put epsilon goes to zero then you get solution of this we call this equation is a regular perturbation of this okay this equation is regular perturbation of this okay so things are very nice here now let us consider uh, another problem here the epsilon parameter is multiplying the second derivative epsilon parameter is multiplying the highest order derivative okay now let us try the same process what is the process y0 plus epsilon y1 plus epsilon square y2 blah blah substitute in this collect the coefficients constant term first order second order then you can observe the following you see here this is a first order already right when you substitute this series okay in this every time you are getting only first order okay but here what is happening original equation is second order when you substitute this in here you are getting a first order od even in y1 first order od right so you will get second order od from next term okay so that is creating some uh, could be that could be a problem so let us see so as epsilon goes to zero the order of the differential equation is reduced okay that's what i said this could be a problem that means okay so that means uh, if epsilon goes to zero your equation is first order okay your equation is first order right so therefore uh, the, 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 there is a difficulty because if you take epsilon goes to zero in this you are getting a first order whereas if you take the solution for the full second order equation you will get solution of the second order right so there is a difficulty right so we just uh, i'm not able to move i'm not able to move sir yeah it's okay now so uh, epsilon goes to zero reduces to first order which is a therefore it cannot satisfy both conditions why you see here second order equation has two conditions but then once you get epsilon goes to zero it is a first order equation so therefore it cannot satisfy both the conditions okay so such problems are called singular perturbation problems okay so now there is a remedy so that is called uh, edge edge layer or boundary layer where you have to do some uh, some post mortem and then try to uh, understand the solution more carefully okay so what we we say one of the boundary conditions so for example y of 0 is alpha is satisfied this is not satisfied if this is satisfied this is not satisfied why because it's only a first order equation right so therefore we uh, we have to uh, define something called edge edge layer or boundary layer and then do a postmortem so call this first order equation outer solution so the solution subject to this condition we can obtain right so this is there now uh, you you consider a variable that means you have to look more closely 
where it is not uh, matching. So our space variable, because the parameter is the troublemaker, the small parameter. So you are stretching your space variable at the other end. So you are using this transformation so that you are magnifying the inner region. So with this transformation, our equation reduces to this in the stretched uh, coordinate system. So now here, if epsilon goes to zero, you can see it is very well. The second order structure is retained. So the corresponding general solution uh, one can obtain. OK. So then inner solution is this what you just obtained. Outer solution is this. So then at this edge, you have to match the solution. So that is method of matched asymptotic expansion. So this constant can be obtained. You consider the outer solution. Then you express this. OK, in terms of the inner variable and take the inner solution express in terms of the outer variable. So then we obtain the solution. So I'm not uh, due to lack of time. I'm not in detail explaining uh, this uh, uh, pr procedure, but I am just giving you a brief outline and the solution is nothing but the total sum of this. So this technique is developed by Prandtl. Okay, so there are uh, nice books on perturbation theory. So those who are interested, they can refer Alain Efe or perturbation theory by Shomoggi. So where you can find the, this. So my idea here is to expose you a bit to uh, typical solution techniques to solve uh, ODE, PDE. So we have separation of variables, then uh, we have integral transform technique, and then if the equations are nonlinear and if they involve a small parameter, you can try either a uh, singular perturbation or regular perturb uh, perturbation solution. Okay. So now I move on to the part two of my talk, uh, which is uh, an application of this perturbation method uh, to understand the hydrodynamic mechanism inside a human uh, knee joint. So this is my past PhD student at NIT Meghalaya. Okay. So let me uh, introduce uh, this talk con consists uh, application on porous media. Okay. So I'll spend uh, maybe one minute on what is porous media and then a typical squeeze film flow in the presence of an anisotropic bed. So what is anisotropy? I will explain. Then uh, finally, I'll discuss application to the joint. So you see the porous media. So these are solids and this is a gap. So this is a, you can say this is the pore space and this is the solid portion. So a collection of uh, such unit we can call porous medium. Okay. Here the solid particles are not connected, but at times it can be connected also, right? So what is porosity? Porosity is the measure of how much of a rock is in open space. So for example, for example, you take, you assume this as a cube and take the volume of that total volume. So then uh, how much is the rock in that? So the corresponding ratio that is give, gives the porosity. Permeability, permeability is the measure of ease at which fluid can pass through. What do you mean by, let me explain. You can see here, see uh, this is fluid can pass through. So it's highly porous. Why, why I'm saying highly porous compared to the green solid part, this white part is larger. Let us assume it's a highly porous, no problem. But poor permeability, what do you mean? From here to here, there is no connection. From here to here, no connection. Here to here, no connection. So the fluid is trapped here. So it is a, but here, high porous, same time, good permeability, you see. So you have the ease with which fluid can penetrate is much more here compared to here. So this is a just a typical layman's understanding. 
Now, uh, you can see uh, this is the bed where deep inside the layers are little vertical. Here you can see horizontal. So that means the structure, the sediment structure which is packed, the soil structure is varying if you go along the vertical gradient. So the simplest example, if you see wood, uh, a huge trunk, if you cut it, you will see round, round circles. So what will happen? So the fibers are vertically grown, inner fiber, then outer fiber, then outer fiber. So it's easy to uh, peel off like this, no, vertically. Many times wood, once you split, you will peel off. Whereas if you want to cut it horizontally, you have to put a lot of effort. That means the fibers are aligned along the vertical direction. So therefore, you can cut, you can cut the, uh, you can cut the uh, wood vertically, you can peel off easily. So we can understand this as permeability is uh, more along the vertical direction. So this is a close view of uh, glass. So that means the silica wool, uh, glass is made of silica, so the fibers are aligned. Now it is very chaotic, okay? So it's very chaotic. So now these are examples of anisotropic porous medium. What is anisotropy here, okay? What do you mean by anisotropy? So let me ex explain. Suppose uh, the fibers are aligned at an arbitrary angle, okay? So the fibers are aligned at an arbitrary angle. Then, so you have anisotropy. So this is the X direction, Y direction, the permeability along K1, permeability along K2. So this is the uh, angle, okay? So that means orientation of cylinders inclined at an angle phi with the horizontal. So these are the fibers are aligned. If phi is 90, then vertical permeability dominating. If phi is zero, horizontal permeability is dominating, right? Because the fibers are aligned like this, horizontal, okay? So you, you take a sugar cane uh, stick, then what will happen? The fibers are vertical, right? So we cut and we peel off like this. So fibers are vertically aligned. The permeability is uh, more aligned in the vertical direction, right? So there are several such examples. So now I say this is anisotropic with an anisotropy angle phi, but the permeability is only along the principal directions. What is permeability? If you want to understand as a layman, you talk uh, about uh, you take a chalk piece. Uh, olden days, we used to have uh, some lightweight chalk pieces. Later on, we got something called dustless chalk piece. So the previous chalk piece, if you see, that is more porous, right? Uh, if you draw, then a lot of dust comes out. So then the, the recent dustless chalks, they are less porous because they are dense. The particle packing is very dense, okay? So uh, that is depending on the so now, what is this actually? It is nothing but the conductivity or resistivity, similar to in, a, in a electricity or magnetism, permittivity in fluid mechanics, permeability, both physically represent similar, similar phenomena. So now, in case of anisotropy, uh, the, the principal, that means the permeability along the principal directions is different. Then, you want to have complete span of the space. So you would like to get the arbitrary anisotropic structure. Then we have this corresponding uh, rotation matrix operation. So then we get the, uh, this is the typical uh, two dimension anisotropic permeability, where K1 is uh, permeability along the horizontal, K2 is permeability along vertical, and uh, phi is uh, phi is the uh, phi is the corresponding phi is the corresponding 
um, angle which we have seen. Now, the anisotropy, uh, this is the anisotropy ratio. So, what do you mean by anisotropy ratio? The competition between vertical to horizontal. So, that is uh, lambda. If K2 equals to K1, then it is simple isotropy. Okay. So, that is the uh, ratio is 1 and phi is the angle. Okay. So, now, uh, so, yeah, now I understood. So, now let me come back to the, uh, let me come back to the uh, example of squeeze flow. So, now uh, in squeeze flow, what do you mean by squeezing? So, we, uh, we take some, uh, for example, uh, toothpaste, we squeeze it. So, when we eat, we squeeze, right? So, due to the squeezing mechanism only, the food is going inside. So, how squeezing happens? There should be some load or uh, there should be some force, okay, either of those, okay? So, let us see uh, in this example what happens, right? So, let us see. Squeezing film uh, application will be with the knee joint. So, let me quickly brief some uh, literature. So, this is a very classical problem. Uh, we are not the first ones to attempt this. It's very, very classical problem. But what I would say here is uh, the application with the re reference to anisotropy. So, that is uh, slightly new. So, I will uh, not spend much time on the literature. Yeah, for example, this is a contribution by Professor Buzurkain. Uh, group okay so now uh, we have uh, considered recent models where Knox et al have considered a, a knee joint application with uh, isotropy so now uh, we have considered anisotropy and I would like to spend some time on explaining this problem okay so I will show you the structure of the knee joint and how uh, uh, the current model will try to estimate some useful information. So, typical cartoon of the knee joint. So, you have, uh, so this is the uh, femoral condyli and then uh, this is the tibial plateau. Okay. So, this is the femur and tibia. So, this is the cartilage. So, what is cartilage? Cartilage, for example, here it is very uh, stiff, right? So, that is not a bone and same time that is not a, a soft tissue. So, it's little hard tissue that is a cartilage. Okay. So, there are nice fibers in that. Similarly, knee joint has this structure. And here you have a thick fluid called synovial fluid. So, now when people walk, so there is a nice uh, uh, squeezing mechanism happens. So, that means this is, a, this is happening. Okay. Squeezing. So, with this, uh, we are able to nicely walk. So, the moment it contacts, then you feel the pain, okay. So, the upper femoral condylis, if it meets the tibial plateau, you will feel the pain. So, therefore, one should understand this mechanism, how the fiber alignment will really help you uh, uh, to avoid the contact, okay. So, the main aim here is uh, one should avoid the contact. So, if the cartilage is very uh, soft, then uh, naturally uh, the upper plateau, uh, upper condylis will come and hit the plateau. Okay. So, how the structure of the uh, cartilage, that means I am talking about this cartilage. The structure of the cartilage, top it is, it is uh, called superficial. The fibers are horizontally aligned. Middle random deep vertical so this is the structure of uh, the the cartilage in the human knee and below the cartilage you have the subchondral bone what is that so this is the bone from here and this is the bone this is the cartilage this is the cartilage synovial fluid and there are some cushion type uh, jackets where uh, when this comes down when it is pressed, the fluid is going up. When you release the step, the fluid is again. So, it is a nice uh, uh, pulley kind of system. Okay. So, lubricating system. Now, why uh, this structure? Uh, I mean, uh, those who believe uh, God, definitely they have to appreciate it. So, if suppose other way around, what do you mean by other way around? 
top the vertical uh, fibers are sitting and this is coming at the bottom so then what could have been uh, once you put with some force the upper one it will hit and this will offer some resistance right vertical means it will offer some resistance you see i cannot whereas uh, here i can uh, so maybe this will collapse right so initially this will compress then the the uh, arbitrary orientation will give some resistance and this will protect so overall the lubrication system is nicely working so now we would like to model this this is my cartilage this is synovial fluid and upper cartilage for the current problem uh, i am assuming the upper cartilage as just a flat plate you could have you could have taken another anisotropy bed on top also but for the time being right so now this is a time dependent load and this is called typical bearing problem this is called typical bearing problem okay so now we go for some uh, mathematics i am introducing okay some mathematics i am introducing here this is a typical navier stokes equation so this is conservation of uh, mass okay uh, then within the uh, within the cartilage anisotropy so this is the darcy equation or you can say uh, fick's law of diffusion or kirchhoff's law whatever p is the pressure v is the velocity k is the permeability which is anisotropic mu is the viscosity okay so this i have explained k structure so now uh, we uh, estimate the net vertical force exerted by the bearing by the fluid inside the gap okay so that means uh, we have we calculate the shear stress okay tau y y is the shear stress and then the force acting so then uh, sorry this is the normal stress normal stress because with this load uh, you are you are applying a load so that load is integrated on the normal stress so what is the force we have calculated then typical force balance height is changing which height is changing this is hj so the it is changing okay force applied released applied released so the height is changing so we obtain the bearing equation so then we try to understand time when h is zero that is called contact time okay so time when h is zero so i am skipping the math part because it's not so i have used the perturbation problem so main idea of uh, my explaining perturbation method is because here we have used the small parameter estimate okay so any case so uh, this is a small parameter estimate we have used and then this is the leading order uh, so uh, equations so then uh, we can get the solution okay so any case so now uh, forest media uh, also we get the corresponding uh, perturbation solution and uh, so th this is available so my intention is to explain the application of perturbation method and some interesting results okay so you can see this is a perturbation solution i am developing constant solution first order solution second order solution okay so we develop so now the explicit form of the load condition what is the load condition l of t with the dh by dt height is changing right so what is our primary aim to determine the time duration the upper bearing reaches to establish contact that means how much time for a prescribed load how much time it takes the upper plate to come in contact with the lower plate once you estimate our aim should be avoid this contact why you should avoid the contact naturally you will feel the pain the moment the upper plate touches the lower plate you will feel the pain okay so we have estimated so i am skipping certain things now the height with the time dependent variation i am analyzing remember this is the anisotropy parameter okay lambda 1 isotropy lambda 2 so that means the uh, the vertical permeability is dominating lambda less than 1 then the horizontal permeability is dominating now you can see 
when the horizontal uh, sorry the other way around so when the vertical permeability is dominating the contact time is delayed okay so when the vertical permeability is dominating the contact time is delayed okay so isotropy and then uh, when the horizontal permeability is dominating so you are establishing a, a contact okay so uh, this uh, i don't have time so with this parameter it is enough for the time being okay so because this physics i don't have enough time so this is uh, uh, the one important okay so now let me explain how uh, the velocity profile is changing at the interface with the different anisotropy okay so you can see there is a little uh, uh, magnifying this velocity how it is changing at the interface you see it is touching here it is slightly below it is slightly below so that means uh, the anisotropy is playing a vital role in permeation of the upper synovial fluid to the anisotropic cartilage okay so this is also important because if the cartilage is very hard then what will happen if the cartilage is very hard and no fluid is able to go so then uh, naturally there will be a breakage right at the same time if the cartilage is very soft so then you will establish contact so one has to maintain a healthy cartilage right we'll come to that so now how the uh, the pathway of the particles you see uh, suppose some uh, nutrient for example if uh, somebody is having a knee pain there are uh, uh, injections where they uh, uh, inject into the knee so then uh, for example you imagine such a drug is injected how the drug is transported right when you walk you can see up to here it is coming inside this critical curve beyond that it is going uh, in outside outside means that cavities you know i told you when the structure there are cavities in the knee joint so they're going and again coming if you want to keep the cartilage healthy maybe the knee uh, the the uh, injections are given and then imagine how the streamlines are shown so up to here it is into the cartilage and then this is not into the cartilage so this is the critical path that we have estimated so that means the particles to the left of the critical path so they are into the cartilage to the right of that they are outside the cartilage okay so this will also give and how it is varying with the uh, anisotropy we have given you see for example if lambda is 3 so then uh, the critical curve is the area of the critical curve is small so that means the more uh, fluid synovial fluid is going into the cartilage okay so now let me come back uh, to the structure right i have just few minutes left so here this is the source which i have taken now uh, they have injected this is the t2 uh, with respect to imaging uh, medical imaging techniques t2 mapping is a popular technique so then uh, they have injected something and then uh, try to see the density that means the interaction of water and then the macromolecules they have an instrument where they can see so this is the uh, condylize and then this is tibia okay so this small portion that is what i have modeled right this portion we have modeled okay so now uh, depending on the intensity what they are asking here you see increased interactions between water and macromolecules such as those of collagen result in decreased t2 thus t2 is highly sensitive to changes in hydration and in the normally anisotropic orientation of the collagen fibrils within the extracellular cartilage blah blah so that means the collagen fibers orientation uh, really matters on uh, on on the contact time and whether the collagen fibers are damaged that can be estimated by some segmentation imaging and once they identify uh, the collagen orientation so you have to support the collagen so then uh, 
uh, you can use some medicine, etc. So these days uh, there are sachets called coliflax. Okay, the sachet is to uh, make your cartilage okay uh, strong so that you avoid knee pain. Okay, so now again I'll come back to this orientation. So what we have done, what we have done again I'm using perturbation, but let me go back. This is from the literature. For a human knee joint, the length, porous layer thickness, permeability, anisotropy ratio, viscosity of the synovial fluid. And suppose you take a load of order of 10 cube newtons, then we have estimated, okay, contact time. So the contact time, it is this, and when the anisotropy is uh, here the contact time is this. So if you are having uh, an isotropy in this range, you can delay the contact time. Okay. Similarly, the arbitrary orientation of the fibers, so that also the contact time can be delayed. You see, if the fibers are vertically oriented, then the contact time is more. If the fibers are horizontally oriented, contact time is less. Okay. So that means the, the summary is you should avoid the contact time. Why? If, if the co contact is happening, you will feel the pain. So most of the people above 50, when they are feeling pain, that means the fibers are slowly, instead of the stiff cartilage, the fibers are horizontally aligned. So therefore, you are establishing an early contact. Okay. So this is one interesting uh, observation that we have. Uh, then. Uh, we are interested in for a given prescribed load, how much time a human can withstand the load, right? So this estimate what we have done, uh, these are some velocities, etc. Then a healthy normal person takes almost order of four, 10 power 4 steps per day. With that, we have estimated one can stand up to 30 to 47 hours, which is larger than 24 hours. Okay, with a prescribed load of uh, uh, whatever uh, uh, order of 10 cube newton, what we are uh, indicating. So, this is uh, an interesting observation. Uh, of course, considering the various anisotropy of uh, typical human knee. Okay, so yeah, before tensile load and then after the load. Therefore, your cartilage should not be like this because immediately it will bend. So the upper layer is horizontal, so that there is a thought in the design, thought in the design, okay. So with that, uh, I'm stopping here. Uh, those who are interested, they can see this paper, squeeze film flow between a flat and permeable bearing. Okay, so I'm sorry if I rushed. Okay, okay. And these are some of my group's publications on Choma, etc. Yeah. Okay, so these are some of the references. Thank you very much and uh, apologies if I rush through without giving final details. Right. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Any questions from the participants? Any questions? Please no one. Any questions from participants? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your elaborative lecture on uh, this uh, partial differential equations uh, by how we'll uh, solve with the perturbation method and about the boundary value problems and how this uh, partial differential equations are useful in a uh, uh, knee joint for the porosity, permeability, very nicely you have explained, sir. And uh, I hope uh, the participants have enjoyed with your lecture. Thank you, thank you once again. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks to everyone for attending this. Thank you, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, due to some technical problem, we have moved uh, to the second speaker. Now we'll go for the first speaker. Uh, sir Maheshwara, sir, are you ready, sir? Yes, I am ready. <clears throat> okay, sir. Now I request 
Dr. Maheshwara sir to deliver his lecture. Can you see the screen? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very yes, good. sir. Now it is usable. Usable, sir. I would like to. Your voice. My voice. Voice also clear, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, clear. Thank you. I would like to thank uh, organizers for organizing this uh, international symposium. Today, I'm going to give a talk on isogeny based post quantum crypto. Many mathematicians have perception that pure maths doesn't have many applications. In the modern days, in digital era, pure maths has more application than applied maths. Let us see how we can use pure maths in digital technology. Just hold on, slides are not moving. All right. <clears throat> in my view, the basic requirements in human life are privacy, security, and trust. In this talk, I focus more on security. Let, let us recall Diapendant's equation, elliptic curves. This talk is more about elliptic curves and advanced elliptic curves and applications in cryptography. Diapentas of Alexandria lived maybe around the AD 200 to 284. He's the father of algebra. The father of algebra in his book, he has written Arithmetica. <clears throat> he studied the general problems of finding integers, rational solutions to a system of polynomial equations. Diapenton equations is a system of polynomial equations with integer or rational solutions with a rational number of numbers coefficients. So elliptic curves are one of the classes of uh, Diapenton equations. About elliptic curves, when talking about elliptic curves, I can't resist myself without referring the quote of French mathematician, Serge Lang, who began one of his many monographs as follows. It is impossible to write endlessly on elliptic curves. This is not a treat. This is the quote he has given. Let us recall the long form of an elliptic curve. The long form of phase transform of an elliptic curve over a field is set of points satisfying a homogeneous equation, which is of the form y squared z plus a1 x y z plus a3 y z squared equals to x power 3 plus a2 x squared z plus a4 x z squared plus a6 z power 3 where the coefficients a1, a2, a3, a4, a6 from algebraic closure. We have a point, the point of infinity on this elliptic curve, which is also called identity. We can have discriminant for every elliptic curve. So for this long form of phase toss, so elliptic curve, the discriminant is delta equals to minus b2 square b8 minus 8b4 power 3 minus 27 b6 square plus 9b2 b4 b6. Every elliptic curve has, every elliptic curve has a j invariant, which we can compute for this curve, j equals to c power, c power power or three by delta where delta is a discriminant. So using this long form of this long form of elliptic curve, we can derive short form of Wistros elliptic curve by mapping. So we have taken this uh, delta in which we have represented in terms of uh, those B. These those Bs are called 
state values b2 equals to a1 a1 square plus 4 a2 b4 equals to 2a4 power 2 plus a1 a2 a1 times a3 b6 equals to a3 square plus 4 a6 b8 equals to a1 square a6 plus 4 a2 a6 minus a1 a2 a3 a4 a2 a3 power 2 minus a4 square c4 equals to b2 square minus 24 b4 c plus 216 b6 which is very complex uh, uh, system one can derive these <clears throat> so this is a part of uh, the elliptic curve so, so algebraic geometry is very complex let us recall the sort vistos elliptic curve the sort Vistos form of elliptic curve, which is derived from long Vistos form of elliptic curve by mapping through isogenies, uh, isomorphisms. So when the characteristic of the field is strictly greater than three, is a set of points which satisfies, in, which is in the projection, projective form, y squared z equals to x power three plus a four z squared x plus a six, a six z power three. You can substitute z value equals to one, then you can see that this is the just a uh, Cartesian form. So y square equals two x power three plus a four x plus a six. For some constant a four a six belongs to al algebraic closure field. The discriminate for this minus sixteen times four a power a4 power 3 plus 27 a6 power 3 and j invariant equals to 1728 times the discriminant uh, sorry 4a power 3 power 3 by 4a power 3 plus 27 a6 power 3. we do have some other form of ellipticals but we use mostly the vista sort form let us recall those other forms I have listed only a few of other forms of elliptic curves, one of which is a uh, essence form of elliptic curve, which was uh, discovered by Essen in 1844, which is of the form y squared times z equals to x power 3 plus a1 z squared times x plus a3 times z power 3, which is also in the projective form, for which it discriminated delta equals to a3 power 3 times a1 power 3 minus 27 a3 not equals to zero. And another one is Uff's form, which was given by Uff's in 1948 over the field, which is of the form Ax, A times X times Y square minus Z square equals to B times Y times X square minus Z square, where the discriminant delta equals to A4 minus B4 not equals to zero. So here I have represented in terms of projective form. If you want to go for partition form, you can just to substitute Z value one. Another important one which we use in crypto, Montgomery elliptic curve, which was given Montgomery in 1987, which is defined over a field as B times Y squared Z y squared times z equals to x power 3 plus a a times x squared times z plus a x times z squared where a and b are in the algebraic closure field with the discriminant delta equals to b times a squared minus 4 it should be not equals to 0 it is equals to 0 it, it won't be elliptic curve it would become singular Another one is the Edward form of elliptic curve, which was given by Edward in 2007, which is defined over a field, which is of the form z squared times x squared plus y squared, which equals to c squared times z power 4 plus b x squared y squared, where the constants c and d are in the algebraic closure field, the discriminant delta equals to c d times 4, 1 minus c power 4 times d not equals to 0. So these are the few famous uh, forms of uh, elliptic curves. 
we have other forms so many studied including myself third year sir meer ha chinna help chinna chinna help chestara let us go for arithmetic analytic randi degarige idi em endante ipudu in the an affine form thought which was elliptic curve e over a finite field f q we take a galvas field for crypto because we want to have finite uh, system where k is a prime which is defined with a set of points x y belongs to a uh, field galvas field f q the equation y square equals to x power 3 plus a x plus b and the point of infinity so this is the if you draw a graph for elliptical you can see this the beauty of this graph is so uh, <clears throat> if you add the point p and q you can get r equals to p plus q not here it's a reflection of r so the coefficients of this elliptical a b belongs to yellow field if the discriminator delta equals to minus 16 times 4a power 3 plus 27 b square if it is if it is equals to 0 this curve becomes singular so other we should not, we should keep always the discriminant not equals to 0 and then where it be of e equals to 17 and 28 times 4a power 3 by 4a power 3 plus 27 b square so as i mentioned that how do you how do you add these two points p plus q slope and tangent approach if you have two points one is p another one is q then we can one we can compute the uh, point radius and p plus q which equals to r equals to this we can use by slope and tangent approach and another beautiful property is that doubling point so if you add Point P two times, three times, four times, n times, then we can obtain new set of points on the system. So the point P we have computed using doubling point again by slope and tangent approach, where x two P equals to P x three times x four x two x two square plus Q by two times y P square minus two P. And for the y coordinate, y two p equals to three x square plus a by two y p times x p minus x two p minus y p. So we can easily compute by um, high school level geometry. So we know how to compute the doubling point. We can compute triple point and point. So we can add the, the point P itself sometimes. So another property of elliptic curve which satisfies the group law with respect to points. If you choose points on the elliptic curve, those points satisfy the group law with respect to addition. For instance, if you take a point P on the elliptic curve, another point on two. Two on the elliptic curve. Then, when you add two points, we know how to add these two points. Then we can see the third point R on the same elliptic curve. So, such a way we can have the group property with respect to addition. So, one is adding P law, inverse law, associating law, and commutative law. So, we can conclude that elliptic curve with respect to points. Satisfies group law under the operation of uh, addition. So we can say that uh, elliptic curve so additive group with respect to its point. Another important <clears throat> point here how do you find the number of rational points on elliptic curve? We have two types of elliptic curve. One is for infinite elliptic curve, another one is a finite elliptic curve. So let us forget about the infinite elliptic curve, which we don't use in our crypto. We use a finite elliptic curve. So 
That means that we set a bound. For example, this is elliptical. If we draw this, it will approach to infinity, the point of infinity. So we need to set a bound for this. How do you set the bound? Using Java screen, you can set the bound. So we set the bound. For an elliptical E defined over a finite field, here we are using finite field. The cardinality, that means the set of points on the elliptical, defined such that q plus 1 minus 2 square root 2 less than or equal to cardinality of the elliptical over a finite field less than or equal to q plus 1 plus 2 square root 2. So it is very clear that this the number of rational points on this elliptical within this bound is not exactly like a group multiplication. So this is a, a challenging problem in elliptical. So of course the open problem which there's convention is connected to this problem. A million dollar million dollar problem. Next one is how do you find we need the number of rational points on the finite elliptical. So we have a algorithm, which is a cube algorithm, which takes the complete cardinality of an elliptical over a finite field, order log q power 4 operation with an order log q power 4 operation on a clock cycle. For instance, so if you consider an elliptical, y square equals to x power 3 plus 3x plus 5 over a finite field is a time number 17 we have taken small bound small finite field of 17 then there are total 23 rational the difference between multiplicative group and the editor group we can see that if we take on multiplicative group the number of four, We can compute the Euler coefficient, which gives us 16, but in this case 23. So these are the 23 points, rational points on this elliptical, including the point of infinity. That is why I mean. Any point which we substitute on this elliptical which satisfies this elliptical. Then this is the Mathematical part of elliptic curves. In mid 1980s, Victor Miller Neil Kobe independently proposed elliptic curve crypto system. Each is a public key crypto system. I assume that uh, audience are familiar with the, familiar with the crypto system. Particularly the public key crypto system. I'm not going to talk about public key crypto system in detail. Basics. I'm assuming that the reader audience are a bit familiar with the system. Elliptical crypto systems are widely used in today's cryptocurrencies, such as Bitcoin, Gcash, and also our Cisco. ATM, whatnot. All the security systems based on mostly elliptical crypto systems. Even the web security, which we use for browsing websites, we use a SSL certificate from TLS, all these based on the elliptical crypto systems. There are many interesting cryptographic algorithms using ellipticals. Particularly, I emphasize E two five five one nine, which is a class of four elliptical based on elliptical, elliptical over a field of two power two five five minus one nine, which is a five. Which is used in a TLS one point the SSH Tor browser and GCAS crypto file and WhatsApp signals to social media. So. How do you make a crypto algorithm using elliptical? A crypto relies on computational hard 
empty type problem. Elliptic or discrete cloud there was problem is of class of empty type problem. You might have a question what is a empty type problem? In computational complexity of computer science, there are two types of problems. One is p-type, one other one is empty type. P-type is a polynomial type problem. Means a problem which has a solution and easy to find a solution. Another one is NP type problem, a problem which has solution and difficult to find the solution using a computer. So elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem is a class of NP type problem. Let me define elliptic curve discrete log discrete logarithm problem. Let E be an elliptic curve over a finite field Fp. We choose proper parameters for providing proper security. Q value 1, 0, 2 for bit length 5. So you will choose a prime number which is roughly 300 digits length. If you want to convert it to in terms of bits, you can simply take the, the prime number P or whatever it is plus 2 H2 plus 1 is to the length number but in terms of bits. We take two points on a given elliptic curve, which are P and Q, you can choose two rational points, two points on elliptic curve, this elliptic curve. Then do add the point P n times. When you add P n times, so we have to n P, then take a modularity, mod Q, modular arithmetic, mod Q, reminder, we obtain our new rational point Q. So this is easy to do using computer algorithm. This is the algorithm using the doubling and the doubling and adding approach. But in this problem, if we if I have given the point Q and point P and Q, how many times the point P has been added? It's hard to find. So this is called elliptic curve discrete logarithmic problem. I think it is clear. It takes years to compute to break this problem. So how do you find quickly using computer algorithm elliptic curve discrete logarithmic problem? You choose a point P, an integer n, then set q equals to P, and r equals to the point of infinity, then run while loop. And using this approach, the double and addition approach, we can quickly compute elliptical discrete logarithmic problem. <clears throat> so that is NP. So far, this problem has been widely analyzed to crack it. No good could crack completely. In brute force, one needs to search all possible operations for the integer n such that q equals to np, which takes order q operations on a classical computer. So that means it is hard to break this problem. In a Pollard's row method, one needs to order square root q operations on a classical computer. That means the number of operations to compute to crack this problem reduced to square root q. However, still it is a NP type problem. So the underlying idea of this method works as follows: choose two distinct pairs, C and C A, C -A and D A, C J and D J, both from the Galois field, such that C A times point P plus D A times point Q, which equals to C J times P plus D J times Q. This implies by taking balance in left and right hand side, we can obtain Q equals to C A minus C J times D, A, D J minus D A inverse times the point P. So by taking mod Q, somehow we can find n value. 
but we can't be able to find exact n values. That's the challenge here. Another method, baby step and step method, in which one needs to order fourth root of q steps. So you can look at brute force order q in full order method order square root q, and then in this method orders fourth root of q. Fourth cube root of fourth root of q steps. So this is the best method, but one can <coughs> modify beta source quantum algorithm to craft this elliptical discrete logarithmic problem. I'll give you later more about this. Now, how can we use? Elliptical discrete logarithm problem in crypto system. In a classical symmetric crypto system, when you have a file, you encrypt the file using a secret key. Then, in order to decrypt this file, you need to say the secret key to the receiver. The receiver uses the same key, then you can be able to decrypt it. So, that's how it works. In symmetric key crypto system or secret key crypto system. However, in 1976, Diffie and Martin Hellman proposed a breakthrough results in the crypto system, which is a public key crypto system. Then, in analogy to that Diffie Hellman crypto system, this Victor Miller and Neil Corbridge proposed in 1985. Elliptical version of a Diffie Hellman key exchange protocol, which solves the problem of sharing secret key between two users, the same key. So, how this system works? Let us look at this elliptical Diffie Hellman key exchange protocol. We have an elliptical which is y square equals to x power 3 plus 7x plus 29, and this is elliptical. Here the coefficients 7 and 29 from Galvas field this is the Galvas field. We take a point P on this elliptical, it satisfies. You can substitute x value 58, y value 29, it can satisfy. <coughs> I choose a random secret key, NA from Galvas field. This is the secret key. We know <clears throat> by slope and tangent method how to add the point P in NA times. If you do that, you can obtain a, the point Q. This is the point Q. This point Q is also on the same elliptical, but it in the bound of Galois field. So here, we consider this is the secret key of the user, or you can say the password, and public key of the user, or say like username QA and P. We leave P for both sender and receiver, QA for is the receiver, um, at least a public key. So we have two keys here one is public key, another one is private key. At least Private key is the NA and Alice public key is QA. QA. After computing this QA value, Alice can share it a receiver Bob via public network. So, what I mean here, if I give QA the rational point QA, nobody is able to find the secret key NA. So, this is called elliptical discrete logarithm problem. Then <clears throat> Bob also chooses a random secret key NB from Galois field and computes this value using slope and tangent approach. Then you can compute this QB value. So this is the public key of the Bob and the secret key of the Bob is NB. Then they both exchange via internet, which is public. Then they both compute. So QB. Received from Bob to Alice, then 
Alisa use a secret key. QB is added any times. Similarly, Bob does computation. QA is added n b times. Then they can both attain common shared secret key. So this is how we can save secret key without revealing corresponding secret keys. So this is called Diffie-Elman key exchange protocol. This is the breakthrough in a crypto system which was proposed by Diffie and Hellman in 1976. So using this system, the entire security system works in today's world. Now, we do encryptions. I'm giving only LT cost now for LGAML encryption scheme here because I'm talking only about LT cost. We have three algorithms in our encryption system. One is a key generation, which is done by server, and the encryption, which is done by sender, and decryption, which is done by receiver. So, <clears throat> Alice and Bob, we have two. They both use common set public parameters, that is elliptical, and uh, public system parameters and a point P. Alice uses a secret and computes Q equals to NP. It's we know that this is the elliptic or discrete level the problem. And publishes it's uh, uh publishes a public key that is Q. So this is how it works. So we have elliptical, a rational point, a secret key n equals to 24 Alice computes key equals to 24 times P, which gives 120 and 99, the rational point. The public key is Q, secret key is N. Now, let me give in a simple language, how do you do encryption? If I wish to send you an email, what I need? I need to have your email ID. Assume that your email is ID is your public key because you are sharing with third party. What is password? Your uh, private key. Corresponding secret key is a private key. So what I need, I need to have your email ID that is your public key. So what I need, in order to send a message to you in the encryption form, I need your public key, right? So your public key is here, Q. So I have a message M, right? So what I do, I choose the ephemeral key R and compute C1 equals to R times P. And C2 equals to RQ. Q is a pair of public key. I'm using your public key to encrypt the message and encrypt the message. CT equals to R times Q plus M. Then I will send ciphertext C1 and C2 to receiver. Who is the receiver? Alice is the receiver. So this is an example how we can do the encryption. We have elliptical. We should use same elliptical. We should use same rational point P. Then I have chosen R. And this is my message. This I encrypted using an ephemeral key and also your public key. Then I send C1 and C2 rational points to Alice. Alice, upon receiving C1, C2, Alice can do this computation C2 minus n times C1. n is our secret key. See, C2 equals to n times C1 equals to m. So C could decrypt using our secret key. You should notice that without sharing my password, I could encrypt and she could decrypt, Alice could decrypt using her password. So this is how public key encryption system works. Another one is digital signature. We do use some digital error, the digital signatures. Digital signature can provide Four security features. One is confidentiality, means provides encryptions. Another one is integrity, that means nobody 
it checks whether the data has been altered or not. Third property is of uh, uh, authenticity, whether the message is from an authorized person or not. Fourth one is non-repudiation. Once you send, say for example, a digital email, electronics email, you will not be able to decline it because it has been recorded in the system. That is called non-repudiation property. So in our digital signature, we have three algorithms. One is a key generation, another one is a signing process, another one is verification process, which is just an analogy to paper-based signature process. For instance, your EAG M1 University issued a academic certificate to the student, then you can see that there is a stamp and a signature of the vice chancellor. Same certificate can be issued electronically using digital signature and can be verification can be done anytime by a issuer. So that means if you issue a digital academic certificate, then anytime you can verify using digital signature digitally. <clears throat> so same thing it works for email systems or many of them electronics transactions including banking process and all these things phone pay all or based on the digital signatures i'm not going to give here the hands-on part of uh, cyber security i'm going more into digital uh, crypto algorithms the robust version of elliptical dis digital signatures algorithm also known as um, ED25519, which was proposed by Daniel in 2005. So, which is very famous and unique uh, digital signature. So, I thought of present, which is based on Edward, El twisted Edward ellipticals. So, this is the twisted Edward elliptical minus x square plus y square equals to <laughs> 1 plus dx square <clears throat> times y square union the point of addition with uh, d not belongs to zero and one <coughs> so this is important parameter if you have two points on this elliptical say for instance xpyp plus xqyq so we can compute using slope and tangent, tangent approach so we can get this relation same way we can compute a doubling point the the recommended parameter for this which is a practically widely used a digital signature. The recommended parameter key equals to 255, 2 power 255 minus 19. So this is why we call this ED25519. And D equals to minus 1 to 1665 divided by 1 to 1666. So this is a very specific parameter we need to use. If we don't use, the circuit will be compromised. After thoroughly analyzing the security system now is uh, open parameters are recommended <laughs> then in this uh, key generation algorithm we need to choose a secret key three bit string then we need to run to a hash function you might have a question what is hash function again hash function is a again function which checks the integrity of the data so in hash function is a more like a mathematical function in which we take arbitrary size of input data and it generates the a specific size of output. For instance, we have there are different uh, types of um, hash functions, particularly MD5 message digest file, and SA1, secure hash algorithm one or SA3. Among all these, uh, SA3 is a recommended uh, system and uh, widely used and uh, after a thoroughly analyzing, Sathi is the only security system in which we can have 256 bits and 512 bits. For this system, we recommend to use uh, Sathi 256 minimum. <coughs> After running through Sathi, we can generate the N value in terms of bits, then we convert into <coughs> an integer and we determine P value equals to NP, which is again elliptical discrete logarithm problem.
in the signing process we need to to sign a message a document a file anything that you want we represent in terms of simply a message yeah? we need to run through again hashing the message with the this uh, secret values and you can obtain a again r value as output in the hash function and then we need to run through again elliptic code discrete logarithm problem in the we need to do this automatic consigning process after doing you can obtain a digital signature in terms of r and s then we include in terms of bits where <coughs> We save R and S as a digital signature, then in the verification process, in order to verify, we need to have R and S, and also we need to have public key. We are verification key that is a corresponding to elliptic code discrete logarithm problem. This key is called verification key. We use in the verification process this key value. So if it works this relation then the signature is a digitally verified it is correct hello hello ah uh, sir something wrong uh, Somebody is controlling. What? Oh, sir, we are we are checking, sir. Just wait, sir. One minute, Hello. All participants within lag, sir. You please carry on, sir. Sir? Yeah, 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 I'm trying. Can I see the screen? Yeah. Okay. Only the screen, so, plain screen is there. Okay, right. Yeah, now, uh, now okay, sir. Yeah. So, these are the systems we use using elliptic curves these have been widely used for a long time practically <clears throat> however as i mentioned that elliptical discrete logarithm problem can be cracked using quantum computer what is quantum computer a quantum computer is a computational device that make use of quantum mechanical phenomena such as superposition and entanglement to, to perform operations on binary data so which is a new generation computer which work based on the quantum mechanics which has some properties such as superposition and entanglement like how we use in a classical computer binary data we use a quantum data or we call qubits so this works based on quantum mechanics it also uses quantum mechanical efforts such as quantum communication quantum computation to perform certain tasks I would like to give a historical development of quantum computing. In 1980, Paul Benioff described the first quantum mechanical model of uh, the computer. In 1982, Richard Feynman, who received a Nobel Prize in physics in 1965, suggested to build a quantum computer based on quantum mechanical. In 1985, Dave, a British man, challenged polynomial time search Turing thesis in 1995 quantum circuit was developed in 1997 universal quantum Turing 
mission was developed by Bernstein and Vaji Rani. What is today's uh, situation or development of quantum computer? <clears throat> In 2013, boson sampling as a way to show quantum supremacy. In 2016, random circuit sampling was developed, which is a instantious uh, quantum polynomial time. In 2019, September, Google claimed quantum A, uh, Google claimed Google and NASA jointly published a paper quantum supremacy using programmable superconducting processor, which is named Psychomore. This psychomore had completed a task in 200 seconds that would take 10,000 years to complete on the most powerful supercomputer. In 2021, a team of University of Science and Technology in China had demonstrated that it has the world's most powerful quantum computer. So assume that to crack Elliptical discrete logarithm problem on a classical computer takes roughly 20 to 30 million years. The same problem may be cracked in a two or three minutes time. Once the elliptical discrete logarithm problem or integral factorization problem, other number theoretic or algebraic geometry based problems are cracked using quantum computer users get panic because most of the public key crypto system based on this computational np type problems so then everybody should look for either quantum based crypto algorithms or a, a, a crypto algorithm that can resist to quantum attacks so one should switch to either post quantum crypto system or quantum computing. But we are not sure whether quantum computer today is available for commercial purpose or military purpose. So some governments secretly might have been operating and cracking crypto algorithms and breaking security systems, we are not sure. So it's all suspicious. So one should switch to a crypto system or security system that can resist to all the quantum attacks, right? So, if quantum is quantum computer is available, there is a huge impact on everyday communication, process of credit cards, cloud systems, security, securely connecting to website, all these things. So, we need to switch to either post quantum crypto system or quantum based algorithms this is ibm so 53 qubits quantum computer just for your glance i'm projecting here and what are the significant quantum algorithms that can crack crypto systems peter so who received never in a prize in 1988 for a Polynomial time quantum algorithms for cracking integer factorization and discrete logarithm problem. And using this algorithm by modifying, there is a quantum algorithm even for elliptical crypto systems. Lau Grover also developed a quantum algorithm which is a polynomial time, which is of a quadratic speed up for such technique. So these two, these three algorithms impact today's uh, crypto systems. If you have any classical or a secret key crypto system, we need to read, develop the key sizes due to Lau Grover's algorithm. Uh, he was alumni of IIT Delhi. 
for his B.Tech degree. Love grower. <clears throat> Another one is a data store. Data store developed a quantum algorithm to crack in the RSA crypto system, which works based on the integer factorization problem, and uh, mostly other number theory problem number theory based systems, which uh, works those works on those work based on the discrete logarithm problem. Another one is uh, this one, source uh, discrete log polynomial time quantum algorithm for elliptical crypto system. These are the significant quantum algorithms to affect cryptography. Now, <clears throat> let us switch to post-quantum crypto. I haven't included the most history. In 2015, National Institute of Standardization Technology has planned to switch to post quantum system. And uh, now, they call for, uh, in 2017, they call for computation of uh, three algorithms or two algorithms. One is a uh, key exchange protocol or key encapsulation mechanism, another one is digital signature. But they call for proposal roughly 83 proposals they received i think now recently in july 2021 they conducted third round of competition in which only seven algorithms sustained uh, four for encryptions and three for digital signature out of four uh, three from uh, lattice based system one from uh, one from Code based system and they suggested uh, three digital signature algorithms, but uh, they are suspecting on those three as well. I think two from uh, lattice based, one from multivariate uh, system, and uh, in which uh, in second round, isogeny based crypto system was also picked. In the third round, in third round, they suggested as an alternate alternative candidate. So, what is isogeny based post quantum crypto? <clears throat> Let me give one briefly. <coughs> what is isogeny? If you have two ellipticals, say for instance, E1 and E2, two ellipticals <coughs> over a finite field, an isogeny is a map. <coughs> between two elliptics, which maps from elliptic of E1 to E2 is a non constant rational map defined over algebraic closure field K1 with the pi of O equals to O. So, so where <coughs> where is the point of infinity? So, <coughs> note that E1, E2 are isogenies. If and only if the cardinality of um, elliptic of E1 equals to the cardinality of elliptic of E2. What I mean that after, if it is, if E1, E2 are both of isogenies, then the number of rational points on the elliptic of E1 equals to the number of rational points on the elliptic of E2. For instance, I have taken E1. An elliptic curve y square equals to x power 3 plus x. It is very simple elliptic curve. Another one is y square equals to x power 3 minus 4x. These two are two different elliptic curves. I have the point in the affine, these two are the in the affine form of elliptic curves. The point 0, 0 on E1, you can see that it satisfies, which has order 2. So this elliptic curve has order two. There is an isogeny pi x y equals to x square plus one by x y times y x square minus x one x square minus one by x square. So we map this elliptic curve using Wells formula. Wells formula, which is we can compute this so even isogeny is using Wells formula. So we can map this elliptic of E1 to E2 
via this uh, isogen or rational function. So after mapping the number of rational points on this elliptical, the number of rational points on this elliptical are same. So we call these isogenies. Isogen is a map, just a map. So using this concept, J1 DFO proposed in 2011 a, a key exchange protocol, which is just an analogy to the Diffie Element key exchange protocol. They have taken in you know, a crypto choice of parameters is very much important. They have recommended a prime number P, which is of the form P equals to B1 power E1, B2 power E2 times F plus R minus 1. We need to choose a particular form of a prime number. Then we have chosen a super singular elliptical. How do you say that a super singular elliptical? Venkatesh is requesting to share content. <coughs> Sorry. Again, the same problem. Okay, now it's fine. So, in the state, so we need to choose six singular elliptical. This is the group structure. It's fine, it's fine. Thank you. E P square is a product of two cyclic groups of order. Choose two points in this uh, particular elliptical such that the order is uh, this. Choose again two rational points P and Q in this uh, elliptical such that generator P to Q T equals to in this order. Then consider system parameters, elliptical E, super singular elliptical E, point P1, point Q1, and the point P2 and Q2. So the point P1 and Q1 and point P2, Q2 must be in these ellipticals. Then Alice chooses a secret subgroup, GA of elliptical over b1 power e1 by choosing an integer in this range 0 less than or equals to r less than b1 e1 power e1 and setting a point again we need to compute we need to do this automatic and set a generator ga then alice computes an isogeny ia which maps from e to ea with the kernel GA generated by RA and sends this elliptical and a rational point pi A P2, another one is pi A Q2 to Bob. Then Bob also does same kind of computation using these parameters. And then they both exchange via public network. Then they compute. This. Alice computes this automatic, then computes this isogeny using Wells formula. Bob also does this computation, then he computes this. It's very complex. Then compute the composition with the kernel. Finally, we can obtain common state ellipticals E dash A B and E A B two ellipticals. We know how to compute the J invariant. If we compute J invariant, we, we definitely obtain same J invariant. So this the J invariant of these elliptic is called isogeny uh, uh, sorry 
compensate secret key. So this is how this system works. Then, <clears throat> so this is just a key exchange protocol using isogenies. The same team with the additional members, group of members, J et al. Submitted indistinguishable chosen ciphertext key encapsulation mechanism scheme. You can find full details about this uh, scheme on this website. They submitted to NIST post quantum computation. Up to round two, it has been fully sustained. After round two, it has been recommended to go for alternate candidate. Nobody could fully analyze in terms of security of this SIKE. So it is under review process, open review process. <laughs> then this is only about NFT, no, sorry, key exchange protocol using isogenous one can build other <laughs> cryptographic protocols such as digital signatures, blind signatures, ring signatures, identification protocols, even <coughs> protocols for cryptocurrencies, other network security protocols. <coughs> so primarily, we focus mostly on key encapsulations and uh, digital signatures. There are some proposals like strong secure authenticated key exchange from super singular isogenies. Galbraith, Petit and Silva also proposed identification protocols and signature schemes based on super singular ellipticals. You can find these papers. However, most of these proposals as of today practically viable so we should work on these uh, isogeny based cryptographic protocols to enable practical skills by making different uh, techniques uh, to make uh, usable and viable for uh, commercial applications another class of uh, Isogeny uh, system, class group actions and ellipticals, which was proposed in 1997 at beginning, but it was declined to accept because it was not studied fully. Again, the same paper was recognized in 2006. So, how this system works? We choose an ordinary elliptical, not a super singular. <clears throat> Over a finite field with endomorphism, then imaginary quadratic field, and then we also take a O ideals which is inversible. We define subgroups E of A with a set of points over elliptical such that pi of P equals to O. So that means it is a Kernel. We define an isogeny which maps from E to E over E of A, and then there is a use technique involved to make a class group over elliptic curve. So, to understand fully on this ideal class group actions over elliptic curve, uh, it takes long. We need to go through full details of the paper. I have come up with a direct action on this. So this is a class group action over elliptic curve, which we represent ideal times E. So which generates an elliptic curve. This gives an action of ideal class group on the set of the elliptic with the endomorphism. E and E of E. Then 
how do you use this for crypto protocols we choose a prime p with a specific form four times l1 l2 and so on lk minus one where l1 l2 all list out all the set of prime numbers up to k then it will generate another prime number let k be a set of four isomorphic classes of four super singular ethic with a j unit in a finite free <clears throat> then all e belongs to x you have endomorphism endomorphism e and order in imaginary quadratic field with the square root minus p here elliptical over finite field with the order p square is a, a map endomorphism from e to e defined over a finite field choose exponents with us specific parameters mod e i less than a bound b and define a equals to l i e i with the products operation where pi i are ideals of small prime norms then compute e a with the group action using wells formula it has only sub exponential attacks on a quantum computer so we can consider this as a post quantum candidate c s i d h is an instantiation of a group action crypto using super singular curves which has a massive performance so which can be used for practical applications how can you use uh, for uh, using this uh, computational art problem for key exchange protocol this is how it is as simple as uh, like a diffie element key exchange protocol which was proposed in 2008 by these people at least chooses an ideal class then computes this class group x over elliptical and come up to obtain an elliptical EA. similarly bob can do then again compute the class group action they can obtain shade common elliptical crypto uh, sorry elliptical uh, ellipticals then if we use we can even go for j invariant i haven't computed here j invariant j if you compute j invariant can obtain same j invariant for these both ellipticals eab eba so this is a relatively new topic and a new area and uh, based on c p side problem there are upcoming proposals none of these uh, practically used for commercial applications which are under the review process uh, for practical applications these are the few of the recent papers based on the c side c sign c face these are the papers for digital signatures so this SIDH and C SIDH both are very young research topics. Uh, C SIDH based crypto has been active for last two three years. C side one also two three years. So this is very hot research topic for any upcoming researchers on elliptical and isogeny based crypto systems so in our conclusion isogeny based crypto is a hard research topic the elliptical crypto algorithms are still secure on a classical computer once the uh, quantum is available elliptical crypto algorithms become trivially insecure due to the elliptical was not for beta source of quantum algorithm <laughs> Isogeny based crypto algorithms are considered as a post quantum candidates. However, these are not fully widely studied in terms of security. Need to analyze 
yet not too clear whether we, one can use for practical applications or not. Practical isogeny based post quantum signatures are not yet available, and other schemes for like a crypto applications such as a, for cryptocurrencies are not widely available. So one can work on open problems in isogeny based crypto for analysis, for analyzing and solving on a classical as well as a quantum computer. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions I can answer. Hello. Any questions, Ma? Any questions? Okay, I think uh, all are having a very uh, good knowledge of this uh, topic, sir, maybe. Uh, sir, nicely enlightened as how much plays on important role in all fields and explain number theory, algebra, field theory, quantum computing, and their role in cryptography. Sir, taking one problem, you have enlightened as very nicely, sir, explained uh, elliptical curve, cryptography through computational analysis. He also explained about digital signature scheme. Finally, he ended the talk with the isogeny based post quantum uh, cryptography, which needs the present scenario of the world a vital role. It's a booming topic of the uh, <coughs> present scenario, sir. Uh, very nicely, your uh, enlightened us, sir. Thank you so much for accepting within a phone call our uh, invitation, sir. Uh, we are grateful you, sir. Uh, thank you once again. Uh, now I request Dr. L. Madhavi to proceed for vote of thanks of the day. Madam, no questions? No questions, sir. No questions. All are having very clear. <laughs> not clear. I think no question means nobody understanding. You. <laughs> no, 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 sir. Not like that. Mathematicians, sir, they all are. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good afternoon to one and all gathered here. I deem it a great privilege to propose the vote of thanks on the first day of International Symposia entitled on Mathematical Sciences and Their Applications 2022. It's organized on the eve of superannuation of our beloved head, Professor T. Vasanti Madam. It is a matter of pride for me that I got a chance to thank everyone present here on behalf of Department of Applied Mathematics our special thanks to today's chief guest, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor M. Surya Kalavati Madam. Despite her prior schedule and commitments, Madam made her gracious presence and motivated us with her encouraging message. Thank you, Madam. We are extremely thankful to today's guest of honor, Professor D. Vijay Raghav Prasad, Registrar, for his spontaneous support and encouragement in conducting this e event. Thank you, sir. We are extending our heartfelt thanks to our principal in charge, Professor Chandramati Shankar, for her constant support in organizing in this symposia. We vow our special gratitude to our distinguished speakers, Dr. G.P. Rajshekar, sir, and Dr. Maheshwar Rao Valluri Garu for their encouraging research-oriented address. Thank you very much, sir. I take the opportunity to extend our most sincere thanks and deep sense of appreciation to our beloved head and Dean Faculty of Sciences, Professor T. Vasanthi Madam, <coughs> convener and BYS Chairperson, Dr. G. Kathyayani, organizing committee members, my colleagues, Dr. M. Sridhar Babu, Dr. B. Srinivas Ridigaru, and Dr. S. Sunita, supporting staff, Nageshwari, Achamma, IT advisor, Professor Y. Nazir Ahmad sir, and his team, Mr. Anil, research scholars, young students, and participants from other universities, print and electronic media. I once again thank you all for your attention. Thank you. We will share, uh, a feedback link will be shared during the sessions tomorrow. So,
please kindly log in by 10:30 am tomorrow with the same link provided to you thank you all now you can leave thank you once again